Good morning, everybody. We are creatures of habit. We love our spot. We love the way we do things. Because of this, though, we sometimes take for granted the world around us. We just have to slow down and look a little deeper. And we might be surprised with what we find. My biggest passion is the sea. The sea holds your gaze the same way that the land holds your feet. Put a camera in my hands, and I'm a happy camper. So it comes as no surprise when I was studying in the UK and later working in the US, when I was asked something about my country, after I would sort out that Cyprus is not in Louisiana, <laughs> I would show them pictures of the beach. And then in 2000, when I was in Germany, I thought, why don't I put these photographs on the web for everyone to see? And I registered prodaras.org. Apologies to the Limassolians here. <laughs> Before long, I had 40 visitors per day, and queries like, uh, would like to get married in Brodaras, can you please recommend a church? <laughs> Questions that I passed on to the municipality. In 2002, I came to Cyprus, and you can imagine my excitement when I had the Mediterranean at my doorstep. I was clicking away and swimming all year round, particularly in the off-season period, which I really enjoyed because there are less human distractions and, and, and the water is really crystal clear. So to promote this, I published a book, Ayanaba and Brodaras All Seasons, which mostly focuses on the off-season period. And this is the point where I decided to look a little deeper, to explore the coastline of the Free Famagusta area. And I'd like to share some of the highlights of that with you. We all know our beloved Nisi Beach, Fig Tree Bay, Gonos Bay, maybe Serena Bay, perhaps Ayan Argiri, where the visibility underwater is more than 40 meters. But you may be less aware of the Bezunospili Cove, where we have many seashells. The peninsula of Cape Grego with the solar-powered lighthouse. Amos to Gamburi Beach. The Scouts Beach. And the northern coastline of Gonos Bay. Wouldn't you like to be under that little orange umbrella? In fact, there are 44, there are more than 44 distinct beaches in the Free Famagusta area. And looking a little deeper yet, the sand is also different. The coarsest sand being in Agia Thecla, which also makes it the more fluffy sand, and it's the birthplace of the largest hard-shelled turtle on our planet. We know it as careta careta, because it makes it easy for the turtle to dig into this sand and for the hatchlings to come out of the sand. And probably we will have a lot more of these super cute reptiles because the sex of the turtle is determined from the temperature of the sand. 
and with the global warming trend, there will be more females. And because the turtle is polygamic, there will be more turtles, <laughs> which is not necessarily a bad thing because the turtle's favorite food is the jellyfish. If you get lucky, you might also spot one other really cute animal. It's actually the, the seal, Monachus monachus. It's on the critically endangered list of the species in the world. There's only 600 of them in the whole world. And we have at least perhaps as many as 10 in Cyprus. You can spot them usually in this area, in the Monachus Monachus Arch, which is just off the Ayanaba Hotel area. Some things stare right at us and we don't take notice. We have fresh spring water rising from our seashores throughout the year at the beach. You may think it's dirty water. Well, it's actually not. Where is this? At Crystal Springs, which is off Vrisudon Avenue. How more obvious does it get? <laughs> For the adventurers among you, how about walking on water? Well, along our coastline, there, are, there is a ledge, sometimes running for as much as a kilometer. All you need is a pair of shoes with ankle support. Our beloved Cabo Greco, the home of more than 80 different types of birds, such as the cormorants that we see in this picture, used to be a forest filled with juniper trees. The juniper tree is the tree from which the flavor of gin is made from the fruit. But the tree also has rot-resistant properties and hard wood, and it was ideal for use for boats, cupboards, and fences. So nowadays, pretty much all the trees are gone. The most impressive one, though, 150 years of age, can be found standing proudly and alone on the old Ayanaba Prodaras Road. So putting these things together into a book in three languages, you get a beach guide. And I turned this into an app, free of charge, which provides all the information of the book, plus which is the closest beach to you, and it lets you find the beach you want to go to by using filters such as the morphology, if it's sandy, if there's a lifeguard, the atmosphere, if it's romantic, if it's lots of activity, if there are a lot of people, a few people, if there's food, and so on. One year after I published the book, the mayor of Limassol calls me up. <laughs> Andreas, I want a book about the beaches of Limassol. I say, of course, Mr. Mayor. I didn't really need much persuasion, as you can imagine. So here I went again. Now Limassol is truly a gem. It combines the old and the new, the classic and the modern, the romantic and the wild. The district starts with white limestone rocks, which contrast beautifully against the dark gray, almost black sand, a really peaceful, romantic environment. Moving westwards, the cosmopolitan city of Limassol welcomes you with one of the nine ancient kingdoms of Cyprus, that of Amathunda. The view from the Acropolis is breathtaking. At this point, there is also a very large monolithic jar dedicated to the goddess of Aphrodite. It's actually a replica, as the original is in the Louvre. <laughs> Walking along the coastline, next to the ancient port, from which the rocks were taken to build the Suez Canal, is priceless. The city there onwards 
has about 20 kilometers of sandy beaches with luxury hotels, with beach bars, restaurants, marinas, water sports, and anything else you can imagine for a great time. And all this next to the vibrant city of Limassol, which blends the old and the new seamlessly. In fact, right in the middle of the old city is the Limassol Castle, which is now housing the Cyprus Medieval Museum, and it used to be a prison until 1950. Moving further westwards, the wild side of Limassol begins. The sand is richer and browner and thicker. The pebbles are multicolored. The waves are wilder and the land is greener. In fact, the peninsula of Akrotiri that you see in the photograph used to be an island until 2,000 years ago when it connected with the mainland. And what you can see is the salt lake, which is about 10 square kilometers big and houses the, the lake and around it one of the most sensitive ecosystems of the whole of the, in the whole of the island. So here I was again, flying around, taking photographs. This was actually August 30th, flying over the salt lake, and I see these little specks on the lake. I'm like, let's take a closer look, and you can imagine what these are. They're flamingos. I'm like, I think to myself, whoa, even the flamingos choose Cyprus as their permanent residence? <laughs> because obviously, they had never left. They came the previous year, and they were still here, something I verified with the fisheries department. I did not expect what I found at the Akrotiri Bay. Sand dunes. A wide, sandy beach housing 25 turtle nests. A paradise for kite surfers. And this all along 11 kilometers of pebbly coastline with a lovely shipwreck along the way. The area is bustling with history. Temples, palaces, theaters, Roman baths, even mosaics. The one particularly we see here is at the house of Achilles, and that's actually Achilles, dressed as a girl with curly hair and a necklace because his mom didn't want him to go to the Trojan War. The most spectacular beach, in my books at least, is the one that lies under the temple of Apollo Ilates. It's a little hard to get to, but it's really worth it. The archaeology department actually found figurines and idols on the slopes of these uh, cliffs linked to the god of the woodlands, Ilates. Now, the cliffs are used as nests for the migrant birds, such as the Falcon, Eleo Falcon Eleonora, which shows off by flying at more speed than 110 kilometers per hour, sustainable speed. Now combine this with thick brown sand, deep blue sea, a couple of fishing boats, and some shade, and believe me, you will not want to leave this place. The rest of the district has several more wild beaches, some of them with no sign of civilization, which really make it a true escape from our, for, from our everyday busy lives. And the district ends with just the way it started, with white limestone rocks sometimes so white as the purity of the nature that surrounds them. Along the way, as you can imagine, it's not the destination that matters, it's the trip. And along the way, I found 
unseen heroes, such as Adamos, Vasos, and Christakis. These are the guys who do most of the work with the least amount of noise. Adamos runs a state-of-the-art tower, which David Hasselhoff would be jealous of. <laughs> Vasos is a beach attendant for 28 years, and he greets you as if it's his first day at work. And Christagis is on a mission. He's on a mission to save anyone who potentially could be in danger, as you can see from the photograph. And it really feels great when we help surface these unseen heroes. I have explored the coastline of two of our districts. And I have really only scraped the surface of what lies around us. And you have seen a glimpse of what I have discovered. So please, take time to explore our country. You will be amazed with what you discover. Thank you.